how would you explain, Dr. Craig, to non-believers that the Bible is true? It's just a warm-up. Slightly right. off topic. I don't try to convince non-believers that the Bible is true or generally reliable. I'm defending what C.S. Lewis called mere Christianity. That is to say, the central tenets or pillars of the Christian faith. And it seems to me that there are two pillars of the Christian faith, the existence of God and God's decisive self-revelation in Jesus, uh, as evidenced by his resurrection from the dead. And thus, if a person comes to believe those two truths, I think he should become a Christian. If that is true, that is sufficient for placing your faith in Christ as the decisive self-revelation of God. And so it's no part of my case to prove things like the reliability of Noah and the ark, or the exodus of Israel in the Old Testament, or even the virgin birth, or uh, Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, or the feeding of the 5,000. Those are all subsequent, later questions that can be discussed. What I'm interested in is the question, who did Jesus claim to be, what did he say and do, and what happened to him after his death? And I've given tonight the reasons for thinking that those facts are true. If you'll remember, I gave uh, multiple lines of evidence under each of those four facts, which have convinced the majority of New Testament critics of the truth of the Bible in that respect, with respect to those four facts. And that, I believe, is sufficient for becoming a Christian. After that, the rest is just all details. So then, is just following on, because there's a relevant question, is it valid then to use the Bible, this is the third question down, as a foundation for apologetics, yeah, if oh, non... I, this is so hard yeah. to get across to people. Um, listen to what I said. I want to I quote again from what I said. Suppose then that we approach the New Testament writings not as inspired scripture, but merely as a collection of Greek documents coming down to us out of the first century without any assumption as to their reliability other than the way we normally approach other sources of ancient history. Do you see the point? We're not treating the Bible as an authoritative book and reasoning in a circle trying to prove the Bible by assuming the Bible. We're just saying, Look at these first century documents that we've got here telling this remarkable story about this man, Jesus of Nazareth. We've got things like the Gospel of Luke. We've got this letter from this man named Paul to the church in Corinth, Greece. We've got this thing called the Acts of the Apostles, a sort of historical account of the early Christian community and movement. And the question will be then, um, how reliable are, are these documents? And I've given, again, the evidence which has convinced most scholars that with respect at least to those four facts, they are reliable. Um, and that is certainly valid, I, I, because I'm not using the Bible as an authoritative divine revelation. I'm just treating it as you would treat any other documents of ancient history, and that's certainly valid, isn't it? That's the way you do history.